Okay, and as promised, uh, here's the quick example video showing how we can prove that the square root of x is continuous on 0 to infinity. Okay, so when we're using the definition of continuity, it's always going to be a fairly routine thing to start with. We're going to use the epsilon delta uh, definition, so we still always start with the epsilon be greater than 0, and then we can kind of sleepwalk through the next thing, which is the saying we seek a delta greater than 0 such that um, if the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus f of c, which happens to be equal to the square root of x minus the square root of c, is less than epsilon. Okay, so we're actually going to make this a little bit easier on ourselves by doing it in two pieces. So first off, if c is equal to zero, then this inequality simplifies to um, square root of x is less than epsilon. So if we choose delta to be epsilon squared, then if we start with our absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, that implies x is less than epsilon squared, which implies the square root of x is less than epsilon as required. So sometimes it's easier to just dispense with the zero case first. And then we can deal with the second case, which is if c is positive. So if c is positive, then we'll start with that inequality. This time it doesn't simplify anywhere from here. But the key with this one is that we can multiply it by the third conjugate of itself. Okay, so I'm going to multiply it by this one here. And we'll see why it is we do this in a second. So we're doing the standard math trick of multiplying something by 1, but to make it in a form where this is convenient. And what that will give us is the absolute value of x minus c on the top of our fraction. And you'll notice that's kind of what we're aiming for, because we've got an x minus c in our delta expression. So that's going to be x minus c over root x plus root c, because root x and root c are both positive. And now the key thing is because x is positive, that is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus c over root c. And we've taken away the x dependence from the denominator there. So that gives us what our choice of delta should be. So we want this root c to cancel off. So we'll choose, in this case, delta to equal epsilon root c. Then the absolute value, if absolute value of x minus c is less than epsilon root c, this implies um, absolute value of x minus c. Sorry, that's not right. What am I doing? If, if, try that again. If, if, it, if the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then the absolute value of root x minus root c is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus c over root c, as we've just said. But we've got that x minus c is less than delta, so that's less than or equal to epsilon root c over root c, which equals epsilon, as required. Hence, root x is continuous on 0 infinity. Okay, we showed that it was continuous at 0 separately because it was convenient, and then we showed that it was continuous for all positive uh, values c as well.